In this video, we're going to see how to check the colors in your Joomla site to see if they're compliant with the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. I still have to look over and read the full words. Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. Thanks for tuning in to... Let me adjust this camera. I didn't do that before I started. Thanks for tuning in to Watch Me... Uh, no, Maintenance Monday, number 155. It's a long weekend here. Happy Labor Day to on T20 everybody who is watching uh if you are watching live please say hi in the chat give the video a thumbs up so everyone finds it uh and as uh, has been for a while today's video is brought to you by mysites.guru head on over to mysites.guru to uh, get a free site audit for your joomla or your wordpress site while you're there check out all the cool things that you can do in managing one site or multiple sites and if you choose to subscribe use the coupon code basic joomla and you'll get your first month free all right so let's turn our attention over to the screen here uh that would be that one uh, not that one yeah it would be this one here there's the mysites.guru site so you recognize it when you go all right web content accessibility guidelines wcag maybe someone says wk who knows uh but anyways uh it is a set of guidelines to help ensure that your website uh to uh uh, evaluate websites to see if they're they are accessible uh, for people with accessibility issues and today what we're going to do is we're going to check uh, to see as I said how you can determine if the colors on your website are compatible so in the description for this video I have a link here to the guidelines overview uh, and then two more links we're going to talk about contrast minimum and the contrast enhanced all right, so let's just take a look here. Here we are at the basic Joomla site. And to and check these colors, we're going to use Element Inspector. Now, over the last couple of weeks, or uh, last month or two, uh, I have been uh, seeing different features uh, here at Element Inspector. And, and this one's one I'm excited to show you. In order to show you, I need to disappear. Bye-bye. Uh, now, to use Chrome Element Inspector, you can start by hitting F12 and bringing it up or if you want to inspect an element specifically straight off go right click and then on that element and go inspect and then as you'll see here you have you can see the code for your page and over here is the css or cascading style sheet um, information that is affecting it now uh, down in the bottom right hand corner here you will see i highlighted on the home title uh, uh, sorry on the home link here and it's a blue and down here I go down here is the CSS for it. asteroid nav nav link active and the color now if I left click on that color hello Bjorn in chat you will see that uh, there is the blue there's the RGBA for it and then down here you'll see it says contrast ratio and I have one check mark to the right of it there is a, a down arrow we'll just click on that and now we see a couple things here. We see that the AA mark is 3 and the AAA mark is 4.5, but it gets a fail. Now, this AA score relates to this page here, contrast minimum. And the other one, the AAA one, relates to contrast enhanced. And basically what this is telling me is that the color of this link here, it is compatible with level AA, the contra the minimum contrast for a color on a website. But look at this, it is incompatible with the enhanced contrast. Now, as we look at these colors, at, at the colors uh, palette up here, I, I did not, it's probably not even, well, maybe it's a palette. You'll see there's two white lines. Uh, they're sort of curved. One is, shows the, uh, is the line for the double A uh, contrast rating which is three anything below this line satisfies the contrast for um, that first that first level of contrast which I remind myself is the minimum so anything below this white line is the minimum and anything below the second line is the enhanced now you'll see right up here just sort of changing in there or just in the top corner is this color for this link here that we have selected and as I move it down, 
it's still in between these lines, so it gets a, it passes the double A, but it fails the triple A check. All right. Now, as soon as I move it down below, and notice that as I move it, the color is changing here and the preview is changing here. Now I get a, a an approval rating on the enhanced contrast. And so basically what you want to do is go through your uh, site and check the colors and make sure that you are using colors that meet both of these requirements because that is uh, important uh, because this is uh, accessibility is starting to factor into uh, accessibility is starting to factor into uh, search engine results and also some companies and organizations are being sued for failing to give a uh, provide their site in an accessible format. So let's just take uh, this. So what I would do here is probably uh, instead of just picking a color willy nilly, I would go back and rethink what color I want with my branding and make sure that the color works out in here because you can always type in your R RGB or here you can do, oh look, here's um, HSLA or you can do hex by switching I'm just using this up and down button here, uh, but you could put your color in there and check and make sure that the contrast ratio is proper. Now, if you don't have any ranking, and I read this somewhere, if this is not showing when you're checking a color, it's because there's not a color set for the background. So for instance, this is checking on contrast between the uh, the font and the white background. But if you don't have a background color set, I'm not sure of a scenario where that would be. But um, if there's obviously no contrast because it's not a color on a color, it's probably a color on nothing and it can't measure that contrast. So keep that in mind. Also, let's just look at a really interesting thing here about these curves. If I use the, uh, I don't know, the rainbow slider here, the lighter that colors get, the less available uh, availability there is below the line. So way down here in a darker color like blue or blue or purple, you get tons of options here. But you get into something that's uh, light like that blue, and lo and behold, it's not. Uh, you know, you get the curve goes way down, and it'll go back up for these others. And there's a nice strong one there. So that's very interesting. The other thing too is let's just see how transparency affects it. As you change transparency, make it lighter, you have less and less options. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so a really handy tool there. Uh, literally, I did not change the color for the uh, link in my menu. I discovered preparing for this tutorial that um, that that link color in my in my menu was not accessibility compatible in the enhanced version. So I'm going to change that. Uh, I hope that that was helpful for you. That's the topic for today. Um, yeah, get your sites accessible. Besides the fact of site search engines, uh, search engine rank, and you don't want to get sued, the more people that can see your site, the more people that can use your site, the more people that have access to your site, the more visitors you have for your site. And so uh, that's just the decent thing to do. All right, so that's the topic for today. We'll stick around and chat and catch up as usual. But for those of you that are here just for that, thanks for tuning in. If you are not subscribed, please do so. Ring the bell to get notifications of new live streams and things happening here on the channel. And uh, until the next time, enjoy your Juma sites and God bless. And hello to everyone who is staying. Hello, uh, Bjorn. I already said hello in chat uh, to you showing up in chat but yes that is a nice tool uh mary is looking at the buying this extension great let's hop right into that let's go ch get back the screen check it out oh yeah just the site coming up i'm already excited to hear about it. let's see what is it uh oh screen reader to help make your site accessible yes that's something we'll talk about uh, we'll probably talk about in the future issue because not only is it uh, visual accessibility, it is also um, uh, audio accessibility. If someone does not have sight or has such a severely impaired sight, then they, uh, yeah, they need to hear. So uh, it's plugging according to WCAG best practices, a must for every Joomla accessible website. Cool. 
uh, screen reader with font size high contrast for Juma. Very cool. What do they have? A, oh, they have a demo right here. Let's check it out. Do, do, do. Click play on screen to see. This is okay. This is a single paragraph text. The standard chunk of lorem ipsum used since the 1500s is reproduced below for those interested. Sections 1.10.32 and 1.10.33 from De Finibus Bonorum A Malorum by Cicero are also reproduced in their exact original form, accompanied by English versions from the 1914 translation by H. Rackham. Sorry, there might have been a bit of echo between my speakers and what was going desktop audio, but that is very nice too. Um, cool. Now, Bjorn says, uh, Joomla 4 comes with the tool built in. And, oh, and Mary says, good night. Nice yeah, that is cool. Yeah, that's going to be great to have as part of uh, have on a site. Um, very cool. Uh, let's see what else does it say here. Font sizing, three high contrast modes, dyslexic font, gray hues, and large cursor, text spacing. Oh, okay. I think I have a client that I can use this on right away. Because not only, uh, but because the person working in their office is uh, does have a visual impairment. And so um, that would be, I know they'd be very happy about that. Cool. All right. Uh, although they have a WordPress site. I wonder, there's probably something for WordPress, but uh, maybe I can get them to go with Joomla. Anyways, uh, you know, the challenge of going, uh, you know, pick, I'm picking up some WordPress clients, as you know. Uh, the challenge is, is I have so many extensions and memberships for Joomla. Um, it's to their advantage financially, in that sense, for me to build in that. But um, But there's lots of other things. Yeah, so not this tool, but accessibility. Oh, and they have a WordPress version. Oh, well, aren't they sneaky? Oh, there you go, demo WordPress. Oh, well, there you go. Hey, one more, one more time I'm glad I showed up on Monday for the live stream to see what I could learn. I like that. And this is the this. WordPress logo. This is the WordPress oh, logo. Oh, my goodness. Mousing over the this image. This is the WordPress logo. Tells you what it is. This is the WordPress logo. Wow. All right. Very cool. All right. Well, that is definitely worth it. You know, the other thing too, and I mentioned, uh, you know, okay, so it's search engine requirement or, or your ranking in a search engine results is dependent on it or it's a factor. Um, you don't want to get sued. It's a, it's a decent thing to do. Oh, goodness. <coughs> Excuse me for that sneeze. Um, it's a decent thing to do, but this is a new bandwagon. Jump on it before others do. Start offering this to your clients. Bring it up to the, their awareness so that they can, uh, so that they can have this on their site and, uh, and, and do better. Remember back in the wild, in the wild west of the early internet, if you were a business and you had a web page, you were killing it. And a lot of people didn't have web pages. It was super easy to get found because there weren't many. So it's important for us to keep on the cutting edge of things, just to keep ahead of everybody who's slow to the game. I mean, there's lots of people now because of the pandemic who are thinking, okay, I really need to get going on my website. I need to take this seriously. The serious people are already moving on to this. So that is excellent. I think that that will uh, be something I want to add to my site. Yeah, cool. All right, well, what else is happening? Um, it's Labor Day. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bjorn says there's not able to stop it when you start it. But it's coming in uh, Joomla 4 Accessibility Core. Cool. Well, I know that there's definitely one site that uh, right now is not going to be in Joomla 4 for at least a year, I would guess, after it comes out. It all depends because there's just so many 
things in there uh, would take some time but uh, that's okay all right so yeah Labor Day what's Labor Day look like here for me uh, my daughter and son-in-law and grandson this is their last full day with us after my daughter and grandson were with us for eight weeks this summer my son-in-law came out from Toronto uh, on Thursday for a visit they're off on a hike right now and then tomorrow morning we take them back to the airport and that will really be the end of summer for us here. Uh, my wife and I here at Cybersalt World Headquarters. Time to catch up on some work I've fallen behind on in the last week with the family times. Uh, and okay, Bjorn asked, have I tried to update Asteroid Framework? Yes, I did update Asteroid Framework and broke a whole bunch of sites. However, many of the sites, uh, so uh, talking to Chayton, uh, the, all of the templates have been updated and the fix is in for that. Um, uh, and so uh, then there's also one site that was not working because of uh, I had advanced template manager uh, being used in it and that didn't work. So yeah, that didn't quite go. Uh, that wasn't uh, that wasn't a super smooth release, but they got on it. And the nice thing is they're really responsive. And the one problem I had uh, was fixed within half an hour by a new version coming out. I didn't even have to tell them about it. Uh, John says it's a nice tool. Just take in mind it's not really good for visually impaired people. It's more for people with dyslexia. Yes. And uh, so on this too, there must be some place to change the fonts, correct? Because uh, that's what's talking about uh, in large cursor text spacing. That would be something to try. See our demo site full of multi-language proof of concept. Well, let's see here. There's their demo site. Here's all the tools at the bottom right hand here, which are hiding behind me. So it's time for me to disappear again. Uh, let's see, get rid of gray hues. Uh, oh, put everything in gray hues. So that gets rid of color. Here's a, a font that's compatible for dyslexic font. All right, that's cool. Um, decreased text, increased text spacing, toggle high contrast. Okay cool uh toggle high contrast we got some different options here all right uh play click play on screen reader or select some text contrary to popular belief laura mipsum is not simply random text it has roots in a piece of classical latin and we can increase fonts here cool uh, Ivers, okay, let's see, Ivers got web aim resources. Yes, and I was going to actually cover something like this in a future version, a future issue, which I will do, let's see here, as a tool. And there we go, yeah, so you can put in your background color, your foreground color, and you get a rank uh, let's see here you can check this here you get a fail so that's great for picking colors I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that this tool excuse me oh boy I'm gonna do this tool as another maintenance Monday uh, thing in the future In fact, let me just add that right now. So let me just go to chat on right. I'm going to use this my little tool here. And I'm going to go to here, Maintenance Monday. And Maintenance Monday episode ideas. Um, put that in there. And create a new task. And there it is. Ivor, you got a PHP error where?
Okay, so let's go back to the right hand side here. Which one's that? There. Oh, when you upgrade it, Asteroid. Um, are you sure it was a PHP error and not um, something else that. Uh, yeah, it was something to do with showing the URLs. It's mostly, uh, I, I think they're mostly fixed now. Now, uh, some of the sites that I broke, and I, <laughs> I don't know if you saw it on my tweet, but it was like, it was like 10 to 4, and I thought, oh, I'm just going to quickly install these, uh, update these sites, and I'll go to bed, which was a bad idea because uh, that's a cut when they, when I broke some of them, I ended up having to restore them and get them all going again. So, uh, yeah, do not just update things just before you get go to bed. That's a bad time for that. Do it at the beginning of the day. Oh, it's a new day. I'll start and update this because it's a great task. It usually works well. And uh, so you've got something accomplished at the beginning of the day. But if it doesn't go well, then you have time to work on things also. Okay, so. Um, yeah. All right, that's cool. That's a great, um, great lead on that. That's nice. It's got these controls too. Uh, in the bottom right hand corner. Excellent. Hello, Imran. Good to see you today. Hey, you're here a lot earlier than usual. Bjorn has a new look on his site. Dev site Joomla Forever. Front page latest articles. Let's check it out. Do, 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 do. Cool. Super wide. I, um, one thing I was checking out, uh, I have a client that wants a wider screen than the, than the asteroid template will give them, but, uh, not full screen like this and I think someone just found the solution in the form so I'm going to probably be figuring that out on their site too. I noticed that the um, what is this here inspect your uh, news title I guess it is or oh, heading three news title needs a little bit space a little bit of uh, line height change there. But yeah, it looks good. Nice and crisp. Test three of Joomla's best editors. Cool, you're trying JCE, Tiny MCE, and Cold Mirror. Best editors, I don't know about Code Editor. Cold mirror editor is very handy dandy if you, for example, want to present plain text on your website. It can be blogs with text editor. So it's a plain text editor, is it? And that's probably, oh, there's tiny MCE. No, cool. You're doing lots of work on this site. Keeping it going. All right, let's go chat on right. I'm going to go to Facebook. Let's check out the Joomla extensions. Joomla extensions, anything new? Joomla extensions. Let's see. Okay, and then there it is there. Okay, let's go right computer screen.
Okay, fake sales notification. Who? No, you don't want to put fake. Don't put fake sales notifications on your site. Just be honest. Um, any idea for chatbot to use with Juma? I'd like to be able to put in module position. Uh, here you can, uh, if you use Diallo Flow, you can insert it in any module. All right, so do any of you use uh, a chat bot? Get the old AI talking to people. Uh, Imran says, by way, uh, by the way, in a video tutorial from Chayton, he displayed the accessibility features of Joomla 4, also covering the extension. Cool. Yeah, Chayton, uh, Joom Dev's doing a lot of videos. And that's good. Uh, best sales, there's a Virtue Mart one. Fomenta to economy. Yeah. Uh, pretty, da, 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 who knows? Uh, low cost websites. Oh, this is an ad for selling websites. Well, you've thought about it, but you haven't implemented it yet. Yeah. I would almost be inclined to go with uh, a chat bot for Skype or something. So if, if someone chat at real time, I would just get it on my phone and get notified. Um, it would be good to have some kind of contact like that. But um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, to, uh, someone that want, has a client with wants a booking option, an option to Bookings with an option to pay, and if possible, just pay a deposit. Uh, Tony Partridge, J Events and RSVP Pro. Yeah, I just did a site for a church that um, did I did I show you guys that? Um, uh, let me just go there. This is uh, Park Avenue Bible Church in Saskatchewan. I built them this site. Uh, they have kind of changed what the front page looked like, or my hopes for them. We'll see, though. I'm pitching them uh, monthly management services. They may go for that. But this is J Events here and RSV Pro. Uh, and they needed something really simple. I, I feel like maybe I showed this to you before. But um, here we go. Reserve your seat here. So you just click and you go to the services that they have set up. Um, here's the capacity for each of their services. How many people have already said they're going? And if you want to go, you just click on the event, put in your email, first, last name, a number of people coming with you. I had to customize fields for that uh, in J events and tell them you're not a robot and click and you're on there. So yeah, really cool system. Very nice and simple. Uh, it was nice for what they needed because they, they can go in the back end of their site and download uh, or, or ex export the list of who's coming the size of their groups which allows them to put out seats in blocks where people can sit so there's the everybody in their bubbles there's the social distancing and they're able to uh able to have their services so uh imran says uh, anybody help you with plask please and are are, are there any other are there any pleskins pleskins in chat that can help him I've only seen Plask a couple of times. Um, I think Chayton and I are going to talk about this when the when the uh, it's one of the topics I have in mind for when we get the podcast going again, and that is because uh, you know the thing about cPanel, which is the most common. Um, let's see. Hey, I disappeared. There we go thing about cPanel which is the most common and popular web hosting account manager is they've just changed their prices and uh, after you get above a certain number of people on your server it, you have to pay 20 cents a month per cPanel account so some companies are uh, moving to other products there's a free I know I think there's an open source or free product but um, the uh, uh, if if you're jammed, by the way, Imran, I'll hop on a chat with you right after this and we'll do some screen sharing, see what we can figure out. Um, 
But anyway, so some companies are abandoning cPanel and going with their own file management system or their own control panel, sort of like what GoDaddy has, I suppose. GoDaddy has their own. I was talking to Chayton about it already. The problem is, is that they're breaking stuff. It's just not as... It's just not as good as cPanel. And so they're getting getting slagged on Twitter for their uh, their new changes, their mistakes, their slow support. And uh, so saving them money is actually gonna cost them money. And I just think that uh, at some point, there are some things in business where it's just worth the expense. So if I'm charging, um, and, and these are for big hosts. So if a big host is charging someone, oh, if you've really cheaped out on hosting and you're selling it for $3.95 a month, all right, so you're only making $3.75, you have, uh, if, if, say you have a million customers, you know, you're making $3,750,000 a month just on that cheap web hosting company. company. So really, the overall cost of that is, is, you know, 20 cents of those. If you have a million, 20 cents, a million dollars, it'd be 20, let's see, 10%, you no, know, 20 cents, that's, that's, let's see, one fifth, that's 20% of a million. Can't be, this would be a million dollars, would be 500,000 and 50 cents, so it's $200,000. Really? I must be off though. Anyways, I just think at some point it's worth ex a little bit of expense to have a good product and not to have the headache. Um, Bjorn says he uses DreamHost. They have a good system. Good. Yeah, I mean, if it's a good system, and some of them offer cPanel that's sort of uh, changed. Some of them offer like cPanel hosting or cPanel for an extra bit. For me, I'm a small fish. I can't compete with them. Uh, I don't mind paying uh, because I'm really uh, working for most of my, I'm trying to work, find clients. I just supply the hosting, just part of monthly management, just to have it there. It's a lot easier too for me to uh, work on my own server. I just picked up someone who, they uh, their client went with a super cheap a package with host papa then host papa starts saying oh your site is using too many resources you need to do this oh you want to back up your site you need extra space you pay this and finally uh, they just moved over to my server for better hosting uh Iver says you have 250 websites 500 domains the job is to automate as much as possible and they're all on cpanel yeah and 500 domains, 250 websites, so you might have 10 domains on one cPanel account. So, Amy, your client's been using Plesk for the last three years. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, and uh, and they're unwilling to change. Well, here's the other thing too. I think, and I realize that all of us are in a different economic situation uh, with with our businesses, or you know how we're making money with Juma. For those of us that are doing that, um, you cannot. Uh, uh, if you know, if someone wants to stick with their cheap hosting, no worries. If it's slow, if it takes a long time to do things, just explain to them that to work. Uh, I mean, for me, because I have my own server. Just say uh, the time to work on if they have a cheap hosting on a cheap host and it takes more time to use their terrible interface, you're going to bill for that time. Uh, you know, the challenge is, is that some, you know, at some point uh, along in our in our uh, businesses, in our practices or our freelancing or whatever, uh, there we there's times when you need those clients that are cheap but i mean i'm starting to think less and less do we need those cheap clients now if that's all you have you have to keep them but you have to find some better clients um but when it reaches the point if if we're if we're forever dealing with their bad hosting and because they're cheap and they're not running their business properly and that starts to impact our business it keeps us from finding 
other clients that uh, would be grateful for some good service. Uh, but again, I just want, I, you know, I'm sensitive to the fact that even, even myself, uh, I, I keep an eye on the bottom line because I'm certainly not up into the place of surplus clients yet. And I'm coming up on three years of being full time. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for everything that I have and what God has provided over those three years through the clients that I have. And I have some great clients, I have some great new clients, but I've also had some older clients that have dropped off as well. Um, and some of them, uh, I have to say, I'll have to say some of them are, I've noticed as I've learned and gotten better at business, improved in business, um, that uh, they're, they're making choices and going down roads that probably aren't great directions for their businesses. And I realize I need to find some other stuff as, as well, just in case they disappear. So uh, Emron says uh, they don't know anything about control panel. They have a big discount. Uh, Ira says you take four dollars to fourteen US per month, included C panel and backup. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Four to fourteen. Um, yeah, I've actually uh, and you've and you've got f you got two hundred fifty websites. Five hundred. How many different accounts is that? Like individual accounts, would you have? Um, Um, yeah, I'm, I've been looking for a little bit more than the 14. Uh, I'm at, I've got something that I'm calling business hosting, uh, for, uh, 29.95 a month Canadian. Uh, and, but, uh, on my server, I don't throttle anything. I just, and I have such a small number of clients. So. Basically, everyone hosting with me right now is getting the performance of a VPS, of a virtual private server. So if they have a $5 a month web hosting account, I have a few people I've just done that as a favor to or to, you know, to take on and help them. Um, or if they have a larger site or if they're reselling, everybody's running at the same speed right now because my server has lots of room. Um, in fact, let me tell you a story about that. Um, I had some updates run on, I had Liquid Web run some updates on my computer the other night, uh, on my server oh, about two weeks ago. And when they restarted it, it wouldn't post. It just would not come on. And so within half an hour, they had uh, they had installed a brand new CPU to, well, a new CPU to my server. And it's actually, I think, a faster CPU because my CPU usage dropped by about half. Now the other day it was back up to something, so I rebooted to bring it back down. But um, anyway, so what I, me, uh, you know, it takes me time to uh, the stuff that I can't automate right now with my billing system and that. And um, for me, the amount of time it takes for to help a, to manage a client who only wants to pay like three ninety five a month uh for hosting it's just i just can't compete with that so i'm just uh, i'm just fishing for those clients that uh, want super good hosting want super good management uh want me to take care of uh, of their stuff and um and be available for them so uh you've got also oh, i have about 250 yeah see i have i have maybe 90 and maybe 15 of those are my own accounts. So, Imran, uh, you proposed for cPanel. The hosting provider said in that case, you have to install, set up cPanel all by yourself. Uh, you're not a hosting administrator. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Imran, if you install cPanel on your own, you're going to end up, uh, you have to pay for it. Well, there's a single user. Uh, which is like five bucks a month or something. I, I, well, don't quote me on that, but it's, there's a single user version of cPanel. Then otherwise you're paying more and um, it's not too hard to set up, but maintaining it and stuff like that is, uh, would not be worth doing it for, oh, unless your client's paying, like, paying you tons and tons and tons. Yeah, and the cPanel license did go up and that's what I was talking about with some other hosts that are um, trying to, work their way around it i you know 
oftentimes we look at people who are at companies that are huge and are bringing in the big bucks. So let's say if you've got a million people paying you three seventy five a month for your hosting, you think, wow, three you know three point seven five million dollars. What are they complaining about? Well, rich people have problems as well. Big companies have problems as well. Their problems have more zeros on the end of them. Uh, so I don't want to just say, ah, they got money. They don't need, you know, they can twenty, they can take a 20 cent hit per client. But, you know, it's very competitive up there. And as we've seen with the big boys like Facebook and Google and Microsoft, everybody wants 100% of the pie. So I don't know. Uh, if your goal is to have 100% of the pie and to get bigger and bigger and build a kingdom, then 20 cents a user probably is a, a big deal. And But I just think at some point you lose sight of the force because you're trying to... Uh, I don't know what I was... Uh, is that the right uh, metaphor? Anyways, at some point you just lose the big picture. And uh, especially in the case of... Um, well, with SiteGround, that was... Uh, that, uh, Peter Van Westen from Regular Labs is tweeting on the past weekend. SiteGround's new system is just and the service that he, you know that they broke something and the service is getting. He was just you know it's 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 hurting SiteGround more than they're gaining by that. So and don't get me started. Uh, Chuck says cPanel license starts at fifteen a month. Okay, yeah, fifteen a month would be the one user one. Imran, uh, you don't know how to set up cPanel, you're not know, hosting administrator. Um, uh, see, oh, uh, he has 650 plus domains already bought. The website, oh, the, this website makes you lose money? Is that what you're saying? And it took more time than expected. Yeah, well, we won't have projects like that. But if he's got 650 domains already bought... And he's so, like, uh, you've learned Plesk. Okay, well, I mean, that's the thing. That, you know, eventually we'll learn, especially if you've got a client with 650 domains. Does he have 650 sites? That'd be a sweet client to have. Uh, possibly. Or is he just buying domains or... Okay, so he doesn't have 650 sites. Yeah, man, even adding 650 domains to cPanel, whew, there must be some bulk way to do it. I have to, I'd have to look that up. Let's see. Let's check that out. Bulk add domains to cPanel. Only 20 of 25 done. Uh, here we go. Does anyone, let's just check on, right on computer screen. Uh, let's go here. Does anyone know of a working script to add multiple add-on domains? It's rather annoying that cPanel does not provide bulk. Hello. I encourage you to open a feature request. Until such a feature is added, you might try developing custom script that makes use of the following cPanel API 2 function. Here's an example of how you might do this. Note, the particular the, note this particular example is for moving multiple add-on domains. So here's bulk add-on domain removal. Here's the script. Get add-on domain list. Da, 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 da. Walk the list of add-ons for each. We need the da, 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 da. call add-on domain. Call add-on domain. Delete add-on domain. So okay, sort of advanced method there, but you could at least find someone to do that. And of course, these are from uh, July of 2010, which is frustrating because this one here. Here's the question. Oh, that's sort of, that's because I cut out of, I, I clicked to a new thing. This one was from 2018. Um, uh, Bretzi says, uh, anyone know of a good URL shortener tool? The one he uses stinks. He'd like to set up a URL shortener site for that. 
Uh, Google Shortener is good, Imran says. There also, uh, there's also one in Joomla. Um, uh, the other thing, too, is that I like the, uh, the URL shortener. Is this for your own site? Bjorn, I'll show you. Some, now, you know what, guys, I like, uh, and gals, I like SH404SEF. Um, let's go in the back end of my site here. Go there. Let's close this out. Let's go up to components. SH404SEF, short URLs. So uh, SH404SEF, if you turn it on, automatically makes a short URL for all of your pages. And so you can actually, let's see, let's go to a home page here. And I'm going to go to, let's go to past giveaways link. And that's right click and view page source. And I'm going to search for SH uh there we go sh or just in this case short okay and you'll see here there is the basic joomla.com forward slash kup and when i put that in here it goes to that page every single url in my site has a short url and there's actually a way to show this as a tag at the bottom of a site uh, so you can easily copy this I used to have it on my cyber salt site I don't think I do uh, so, oh and um, uh, no I don't have it. I used to have it show oh, that's not the, that's the wrong one let's see yeah, uh, oh no, I don't have it. I had it so that it would show what the short URL is at the very bottom. So that's one way. Hey everybody, while we're here, let me just show you. Uh, last Wednesday, I was working on my new template for my newsletter. And uh, components, ACY mailing, templates. And I'll show you what I, I, I adjusted it a little bit. There are a few things I need to fix. Um, I went, I used this image. I found a nice divider instead of the hard line. So instead of just using a divider block here, I used an image block. I used the same image all the way down. I adjusted the spacing between like the before and afters. So actually I'm really pleased with how the, uh, the, the, this is sort of like a version three point one or something like that for my template so anyways yeah it uh i was really really happy um one thing though and let's go to emails it used to be that when uh i put a youtube video in an in my news article and that was put in a newsletter the video would show because i think it was from using exley's um, YouTube plugin that takes that shows only the thumbnail but in the uh, new one template I have to switch to actually putting an image which is a thumbnail inside for people to click instead of that automatically happening a small trade-off though uh, but anyways super happy that that looks a lot better I've had people comment uh, that it looked nicer on their phone and uh, just am feeling light as a bird. I, I still need to change over the subscribe form on the site in order to point mm -hmm. to the new ACY mailing version. Um, but uh, with family around the last couple days, I've fallen behind on things. Uh, this divider uh, with the double line, I decided to leave that... Um, uh, I decided to leave that in. That actually is the divider block. And I, I just wanted something different for the header. So I left it in uh, on purpose. And then at the bottom, at the end, I have just the double line and it's the blue. Now you ask, how will it look, look on mobile really nicely? Because up here we can, uh, here, let's go back to templates. I don't want to edit this email here. So let's go back to the template. And if we edit it, uh, up here we have 
Oh, there's somewhere that I can preview it. Uh oh. ACY mailing found ACY mailing found recent unsafe modifications. Uh what what was it? Do I want to use them? Yeah, sure. Okay, so now here at the top I've got preview. So if I preview on how it looks on a phone, this is how it looks. Which is kind of nice, nice it's nice and plain, got some color, people can read, they can scroll down. And so you remember one thing I don't have now is the table of contents at the top. Uh, oh, and this is also, remember, and this was uh, William's suggestion to have something at the top encouraging people to subscribe or giving them option to subscribe. Uh, and remember, we were struggling so long to get this text to appear inside the subscribe button uh, as well when we enter the tag. I ended up just typing it out and going with the subscribe button. So I can, uh, I, you know, I'm really happy. So uh, give and take and who knows what else will come along, but I'm happy. And I'm going to duplicate this because I have another newsletter called the Pearly Gates List that features clean, theologically incorrect jokes. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this template and change the header and change some graphics. But uh, yeah, this has been really, I just feel really nice that this is done. I feel really good because for the longest time that template, as you know, I was saying last week, I just needed to update it and get going on it. So that was really good. Um, Bretzi's looking for publishing short links to a site to go to other sites. Oh, like slinks.link. Okay, to akiba.com. Yeah. Preview is over editing panel. Um, yeah. Yes, Imran, thanks for that. Previews over the editing panel. And let me just make sure now, just now that I'm here, I need to make sure that any of those changed. Modified date. I'm just going to go through here and check these blocks out. Yeah, 10. Category modified date. One thing I know I, I found, for instance, this article here, a strong wom woman versus a woman of strength. Uh, when I sent it out, uh, only half of it showed because over here I had not selected that uh, it should uh, show the full text. I only had title and intro text, and this actually did have a read more. So, uh, yeah, anyways, very nice to have that uh, done. All right, so I didn't make any changes there. I'll close that and go back to extensions here. Uh huh. Doing the asteroid update there. Yeah. Okay, and I think we saw those other ones there last week all right um yeah anything else anything else I think that is all that I have. Oh, Chuck, you're trying out Route 66. That's Amazon's domain tool, right? Route 66. You get your kicks on Route 66. Oh, it's a site map. Oh, it's an extension. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful SEF URLs. SEO content analysis by Yoast. Okay, Google Lighthouse page speed optimization, Facebook instant articles. Cool. Oh, and it's free.
free. Oh, and they have a pro version. Route 66 allows you to define your site SEF URLs using patterns and not be restricted by limited URL options. Patterns can be can include any URL-friendly character along with some tokens for generating dynamic variables like the article's date, for example. Here are some examples. Blog, for slash article year, for slash article month, for slash article alias. Oh, okay. Category alias, article alias. Article alias, page. Yeah. It's that simple to add SEF URLs to your site with Route 66. What the, oh, I was just going to say, what do they do with duplicate URLs? Here we go. If Route 66 detects any duplicate URLs, it redirects the canonical URL automatically. Let's say, for example, that you have an article ID with ID 9 and alias have a nice day. Let's also assume that you have set up Route 66 using the pattern story forward slash alias. The generated URL will be story forward slash have a nice day. URLs like the following, which lead to the same article, will get redirected to story. Have a nice day. Index option com. Then have a nice day. Yeah, component. Then have a nice day. For optimal SEO, Route 66 automatically adds the canonical URL to the page header. This is especially important when pages utilize query and or anchor variables appended to the URL. Route 66 SEF URLs are implemented implement it for the core Joomla content extensions. Google Lighthouse page speed optimization. Um, Route 66 can now optimize your site to achieve a high score at Google Light. Okay, they do site optimization. Lazy load images and iframes of your Joomla site. Facebook instant articles. Route 66 now supports Facebook instant articles. It allows you to generate a feed of feedback instant Generate a feed of feedback instant articles based on your site's content. You can also also filter the feed articles based on categories. Finally, Route 66 comes with built-in integration for Google Analytics and Google DFP. What's DFP? What is DFP? Uh, oh, it's their ads. Double click for publishers. Uh, XML and Google News site maps. Cool. Uh, da, 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 Yoast is da, da, no site manager. Yoast is new, yeah. Yoast is a new thing. Yoast is big with uh, with WordPress. Um, Bjorn uses uh, JK J site map. Yoast is only for Word, and the grading of each article is very nice to see. WordPress, Bretsy. We use the same concept for Joomla, yes, but not compatible or compatible. Well, if they say Yoast, uh, F3, did they say Yoast? Yeah, contact by, oh, SEO analysis, this Yoast SEO engine. Let's check that out. Yoast SEO engine. Yoast for everyone. Other plugins. So they're really heavy promoting the Yoast for WordPress there. They must be connecting to it somehow. Yeah, so they're use so they're looking at it and using Yoast Engine. So they probably have an API link or something, and they're checking. Okay. Well, I'm sure if they say they're using it, they are using it. So uh, Chuck, they must have a. Um, um, they must have. Um, what was I going to say? They must have, well, they must have maintained a list of URLs. 
in the database probably unless they're using some kind of crazy on the fly check there i know sh404 scf has a huge database of urls um maybe let me just go chat on the right here i'm going to add this as a possible watch me work live stream for us to check out watch me work live stream episodes there uh, and created that great Uh, they also use it with Magento, Typo, Neo CMS, and Drupal. Okay. Something to check out. Alrighty. Cool. Well, I always enjoy hearing what you all are trying out. Find some cool stuff that way. What was the, yeah, Minitech wall. That's really cool. We found that out from Mary. Uh, the, what she's looking at today also for accessibility and that. So good. All right. Well, I think that will take care of it for today. That's all I've got. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, Imran, I'll hit you up with a, with a zoom call link right after through Facebook, uh, through your chat. And we'll take a look at that Plesk thing. Yes. Happy Labor Day, everybody. If you're on here, it sounds like maybe you are working. Although of course it's the end of the day for many of you. So, uh, there you go. Uh, you are very welcome, Bredsy. Thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for teaching me some stuff today, everyone. And um, yeah, so continue to enjoy whatever it is, wherever you are, morning, afternoon, evening, tomorrow. And until the next time, enjoy your Joomla sites and God bless. <laughs>